family and friends and fellow YouTubers, it's Kim here from Hancock Homestead and Gardens. And I'm very excited because my daughter Karen is with me again today. And yes, we are going to be doing more canning. Um, Karen and Matt's new homestead is just loaded with fruit trees and all kinds of vegetables. And so we have lots of produce that we can use. And today we are going to be trying to make one of her husband's favorite um, combos. Mm -hmm. And that is he loves pears and he loves salsa. Right. So he, he was like, make me some pear salsa. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> we actually gave him the book and said, look find through here, recipes. find some recipes. And he picked out the pear salsa. And it's nice because, I don't know if you can see or not, Karen, you might have to help me lift this. This five bucket, gallon bucket, is full of pears from their pear tree. You got, how many pear trees do you have? Just the one? And just one, but it's yeah, huge. Yeah, but it's huge. Mm -hmm. As you can see, some of these pears are not super, super big because a lot of times um, trees that you have on a homestead aren't quite as big as commercial trees. But that's okay. The fruit's still just as good. Yeah. And these are very pretty pears that we picked out. However, not all of them are as pretty. This one has a bruise on it, but that's okay. We can just cut that bruise out. Okay? Alright. So I'm going to read the ingredients for the peppery pear salsa that is in the Ball Complete Book of Home Preserving. And uh, this is the best book I have found because... It has one recipe per page, and the print's big enough that I can actually see it without my glasses. Mm -hmm. But I especially like the one recipe per page, and they have it broken down into nice steps. Yeah, it's easy to follow along. Easy to follow along, and um, so if you're new to canning and you have not bought your first canning book yet, this is the one I recommend. And I have probably about four different canning books, but this is the one I'm recommending. So I like this one because I was like, what do you eat pear salsa on? And it gives you suggestions. Like, yeah, there are tips over here. Yeah, it has an idea of what you can do uh -huh. for the whole process. Yeah, and like another tip it said was to uh, put the vinegar in the pan and then add the pears mm -hmm. because the vinegar keeps the pears from browning. I would not have known that without the tip. I thought about that. So, all right, so I'm going to read the ingredients and Karen's going to make sure we have everything. Um, we need one cup of white vinegar, eight cups of coarsely chopped, cored, peeled pears. I think we'll have enough. Yep. And believe it or not, you can blanch pears the same way that you can blanch tomatoes. Good. And that will make them peeling a lot easier. I looked that up. We need three red bell peppers, mm -hmm. seeded and coarsely chopped. Now, I will tell you that the red peppers we did have to buy because mm -hmm. uh, neither one of us grew red peppers this year. We, have, we need three green bell peppers, seeded and coarsely chopped. Now, these green peppers did come out of my garden. We need one cup of granulated sugar, which we have, um, two tablespoons of salt. Good. Two teaspoons of dried mustard. Okay. okay. Uh, one teaspoon of ground turmeric. Okay. And um, one half teaspoon of ground allspice. And one half teaspoon of freshly ground black pepper. I have coarse ground black pepper. But we're going to go ahead and use it. All right. All right, so step one says prepare your canner, jars, and lids. Okay, well, right back here, we have our canner. We have the jars. I should tell you that this recipe will make six eight-ounce jars, which are the smaller um, uh, jelly jars, or three pint jars, okay? So uh, at the moment, we have eight pint jars in there because it's always good to have your canner full of jars even if they're not all filled with produce because it keeps them stabilized and sitting upright. And we'll probably end up doing another batch anyway. Yeah. So anyway. Alright. Step two. Alright. In a large stainless steel saucepan, combine the vinegar and pears. 
All right, so we're going to go ahead and add one cup of vinegar, Karen. That's a two-cupper, so we will only fill that in half. So Karen and I, um, we are doing this today the old-fashioned way. We are doing it without the air conditioning. Um, our air conditioner just makes so much noise when it's running, and I know it makes it hard for you guys to hear us. So um, yeah, we're doing it without air conditioning, and it is already warm in here. I believe that quote is, if you can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen by Harry S. Truman. <laughs> and you probably know that because you went to Truman State University. There you go. <laughs> if, you can't, if you can't stand the heat, stay out of the kitchen. Okay. I doubt he was talking about canning though. No, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. Yeah, it is, it is warm to can without air conditioning, but I, I know how frustrating it is to have to try to listen with that air conditioning running. And we want to do everything possible to make it enjoyable for you all to listen to us. So, uh, anytime you're doing um, homestead vegetables and fruits, um, always have a scrap bucket ready to go because not all of them are going to be perfect like you find in the store. You're going to have, um, <laughs> <laughs> that's why we have the scrap bucket, Karen. You don't have to throw them on the floor. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so yes, have a scrap bucket ready because not all homestead fruits and vegetables are perfect like you find in the store and you are going to have scraps. Um, which will never go to waste on the homestead because you have chickens. chickens I like them. Yeah. <laughs> now turn around. <laughs> turn around. Oh, you missed it. You missed it. It was like there. She had a piece of, of oh, pear on your shoulder. <laughs> Splattering me. This with is the scrap bucket, Karen. <laughs> And that's usually my gig. My gig is to make the messes. Your gig oh is to be gosh. the clean one. <laughs> I'm really struggling. Hey, you got a lot more pears than I do. Oh, I'm trying to peel these, and we don't need to peel them. We just have to core them. And Grandpa's coming in with the little one. Is he coming in? Yeah, she's pretty snuggly. Okay. Come here, John. Come this way. Walk with Grandpa. Are you having a good walk? Oh, there she Did goes. You That's too small. Are you having a good walk with Grandpa? You find yes, the moon? you are. Did you find the moon? Yes. Dad's out looking for the moon. Don't worry, we're not going to raise our eyes to the sun. <laughs> we know better than that. Look at her smile. Hey, see the happy baby. Hey, you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Grandpa. Well, I thought she was getting hungry. All right. All right. Well, we can stop. We're at a good stopping spot. Okay, friends. So we're back. And as you can see, we have a lot of pears um, poured and ready to go into the blanching pot. Um, a blanching pot is when you have a very deep colander type pot. It's got holes in it. And then you have a solid pot that's filled with hot water. And this colander type pot will go down into that hot water. But before we put it into the hot water, we want to go ahead and throw our pears in there. So, just dump them in, I guess. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. Do you want three fours? Yeah. Well, let's do a couple more. There go. All right, that's good. All right, so, um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, take you guys off the tripod 
so that you can watch Karen plant the pears. Blanching is a cooking process in which you take a fruit or a vegetable and you stick it down into boiling water for like 30 seconds. And then you take it from the boiling water and you stick it directly into ice water for like 30 seconds. And the ice water stops the cooling process. Or, and the ice water stops the cooking process. And uh, the blanching helps to remove skins from fruits and vegetables. It also helps with the um, preservation of the enzymes and the vitamins that are within that fruit or vegetable. So um, I'm going to take you guys off the tripod so you can see this happen. Going over here in our hot water. You alright? I just want to make sure I wasn't going to get spotted. Yeah. Yeah, you might have to adjust your. I think we might put just a little bit too much water in the pan this time. Yeah. Just be so, careful. Yep, yeah, just be careful. I just went over a little bit. Are you counting to 30, daughter? I am. I'm kind of looking at them as the other day, too. Yes. It doesn't take very long. Now, whenever you raise that pot up, you also want to let it drain for a few minutes because that is blowing water in there. Here's our ice water. Yep. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Is that cold? Mm -hmm. Okay. It may not feel like the tomatoes did because their skins are a little bit thicker, but according to what I read, they, they do feel easier. Yeah, there they goes. There it goes. There you go. That's further down there. Yeah. And it's supposed to help with the preservation of the color and the vitamins and the enzymes. So there's more than one reason for blanching yeah. besides just the peeling. Yeah, they don't slide skin, right off like a tomato, like a tomato but, but... But they are softer, so you can, like, yeah. come off easier, I think, without... Yeah. Making. Okay, so, um, it's easier to peel these. Once I get my knife under the skin, it's just kind of, I don't know, gliding along a lot easier. and not taking very much of the fruit with it either, so I have very thin peels, so I'm not wasting fruit. And it's just going really quickly and easily good. under my knife. Yeah, they're cleaning up pretty good. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, I'll stop and help you. Okay. <laughs> Second. Yeah. Manch. All those can go in. Over to our hot boiling water. Oh, I gotta change the battery pack. Okay, so we got the battery changed and now we're blanching our second batch. Yeah, I'm gonna try them in for a little bit longer than 30 seconds to see if maybe that'll make those skins a little bit softer. But okay, yes, like I said, they were really easy to peel. Yes, the thing with blanching though is you don't want to overcook either, yeah. but I don't think a little bit longer is gonna hurt. Okay. 
for our ice water. Rotating them a little bit because our ice water is not quite as deep as our hot water was. Mm -hmm. There we go. Spinning around. Some water on Okay. I feel like it's the same result as last time. Yeah. They're still super easy to peel. Though. Yes, they're very easy to peel. Right. I think we're going to be making salsa again, Karen, because uh, yes. that is just one load of tomatoes mm -hmm. that your dad has brought in, plus peppers. Just fine. I'd like to try some new additions to our salsa anyway. Yeah. Substitutions, however you want to. Adjustments. Yes, adjustments. That's a good one. Look, Karen, your dad brought in some of those tomato berries. Well, those tomato berries are so good. They're like my new favorite food. I just cut them up and just pop them in my mouth. It's probably a bad thing, but they're really good. Yeah, they, they are pretty good. It's an addiction. Okay, so it's called for eight cups, so we're each going to do two cup, two of the two cups, that would be eight cups. Are you talking about one of the characters? Yeah. So Karen's sister-in-law, Alexi, decided she wants to learn how to can. So I told her the first thing to learn about canning is how to dice your fruits and vegetables. And then I'm going to go, work girls. <laughs> Get out my whip. Yeah, and she's silly. Yes, am I being silly, Tristan? He says, I'm going to pull up on this thing right here. That's why I'm like, Let's get a picture of Tristan. So Look, there's Tristan. I'll try the chair instead. There he goes, Karen. Look. <laughs> he says, there he goes. I'll pull up right here. There okay. he is. Your child is a standing man. Did <laughs> <laughs> you do it? That's his proud moment. That's his <laughs> Growling. Yes, yeah, I, I think he said, I did it. <laughs> Did you do it? Did you do okay, it? This is plenty full now. Yeah. I'm gonna finish mine. Alright, friends, so we have now successfully done eight cups. So we're like we're adding the last four cups here. And we have we are having them in vinegar. Oh look, we still have lots of pears too. We can almost do another batch. Okay, so now we are going to be chopping the red and green peppers. The recipe just calls for three of each. Three green peppers, three red peppers. It's not measuring by cups, which I think is odd, but anyway, so Karen's chosen green. I will do the red, and uh, we'll add this to the mixture. And I just have to be coarsely chopped again. Coarsely chopped again. And I think the reason they're saying that is because when you cook vegetables down, um, they do get smaller, you know. So, you already knew that. Because you cook a lot of vegetables for your family. See, Karen has all of her green peppers chopped. I have all of the red peppers chopped. Look at the difference. I know. I, peppers I think the, peppers. Yeah, I think my red ones were a little bit bigger. So now we're just going to add it to our pears. To the pears. Alright, Karen, what else does it say to add? Okay, so red peppers and green peppers. Now we need the sugar, salt, mustard, turmeric, allspice, and black pepper. So basically okay. everything else. Everything else. Alright, well, All right. I want to zoom in and show them how pretty that looks. 
Isn't that pretty? You have your white pears and your yeah. green peppers and your red peppers. Very pretty. That's really nice. All right. I'm intrigued by this recipe. All right, Karen, go ahead and start adding the rest if you don't mind. Okay. So, one cup of sugar. tablespoons of salt. Yeah. That says tablespoons. T-B-S-P. Yeah, that is tablespoons. That just seems like an awful lot of salt. <laughs> Okay, now I need two teaspoons of dry mustard. One teaspoon of ground turmeric. to a, a gentle boil and that boiled for five minutes and um, the mixture thickened up a little bit in here so now I can move it over and start filling up my jars. I wish you could smell this because it's so interesting. It's like sweet it's really and spicy. Really spicy. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going really to bring them in for a close up on this so they can see how pretty that is. Okay. So there it is. It's so pretty. Just fingertip tight. Okay. Going down. Oh, it's really pretty in there. It does look pretty. It sure does. Wow. I mean, it, it looks interesting, but I don't know. 
We'll have to have chicken some night, daughter, and invite me over and we'll do, we'll do a taste test. All Many right. Ones. The glass one. Okay, friends, so we followed the recipe exactly, and we ended up with five pints. Um, so I'm not sure, but we did follow exactly. All right. We are now going to process these for how long? 20? I think he said put them yeah. under for 20, right. and then remove and the lid, and mm -hmm. then wait five more minutes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yep. See, according to the book, we should have gotten three pints. And I know things don't always come out exactly, but we ended up with five pints. And that's almost twice as much. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm not sure. And we're good about following exactly. Could he's going not take it that's sitting like that? Be interesting to see how it tastes. Yes, I agree. That one just popped. Sure, pretty, pretty. Mm -hmm. And that one just popped yeah. too. I think we've had uh, five pops, so that's good. And from what I can tell, yep. All right, good job. High five! Another salsa. <laughs> Salsa canning session down. Is it on? Yeah. Okay. Well, friends, we have successfully canned five more jars of salsa. And this time it's the peppery pear salsa, mm -hmm. which will be an interesting combination uh, to try. And um, so, yeah, so we're very happy about it. Yes. I feel accomplished. Me too. <laughs> so if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. And if you want to know more about our homestead and what we do on it, please subscribe. This is Kim and Karen saying bye for now.